Hey everybody, I'm David McGaw. Yesterday, MyYogaOnline.com released an advanced hip opening video that I filmed a few months back. And after practicing it, some of you had questions on how to do one of the trickier postures, Dandasana. It's a funky foot to the armpit variation that looks a little bit like a circus trick. I put that particular pose in the video because it's a really awesome preparation for the foot behind the head pose. But at first, to get into it, it's a formidable posture in its own right. Now, Dandasana itself requires that you have super bendy outer hips. It requires flexibility as well in your inner thigh muscles, your adductor muscles. So typically when I practice the posture, I either try to do a few repetitions of the pigeon pose ahead of time. I also do something like a straddle split if possible, or if that's not going to happen, then I work on uh, the bound angle posture or something to open up the inner thigh muscles here. Now, when you're going about the posture, you want to pay close attention to your knees. If they get tweaky at any time, you always want to come back to your pigeon variations, your bound angle variations, until you can get to the point where you can strap your foot into the armpit without a lot of strain. Now, when you're going into the variation, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it. But one of the easiest stances to start with is with one leg and half your rose pose. Now, if you're going to do that, say, for example, you could take your right leg all the way back near the side. You want to make sure that the top of your foot is touching the floor and that your right knee is sort of shooting diagonally out to the side. The left leg itself just sort of draws in toward the innermost thigh there. Now, when you're ready to get into the posture, you can kind of use your right leg like a paddle stroke. So you pick up your foot with both of your hands, you place your right elbow kind of near the hip crease or even toward the mid portion of the leg, really wherever you can plant the elbow itself. And then you hold your foot upright with the right hand. Now, once you've gotten there, you can do a little bicep rows. You can draw your foot a little closer to the chest. After a little while, your arm get really strong there on the top and you can cancel your membership to the gym or something like that. Now, as you do your bicep curls, as the foot draws closer and closer to the chest, you can kind of hold it statically in that posture. And then to draw it in a little bit deeper, you reach your left arm all the way out. You wrap your left arm like a bear hug all the way around the leg. You work toward the possibility of grabbing the tricep muscles on your right arm, all those muscles in the back of the right arm itself. Now, as you do this, you start by rolling the tail under strongly. You take a little attention to the end of your left leg bone, right where it meets into the pelvis, and you slide the left leg bone downward into the hip a little bit deeper, kind of like an eight ball dropping into a corner pocket. Now, as you do that, it helps you to increase the rotational capacity of your leg. So you roll the tail under a little bit more. You drop the leg bone deeper into the socket. And then from there, you very slowly and very gradually pull the knee toward the chest. Now, at this point, it's important to remember that your knee's not a hubcap. You can't snap it back on if it pops off. And so if you get any pain sensations in your knee, come back to one of the previous variations, or feel free to come back to the pigeon pose instead. If, however, you get to this point and you find that you can touch your foot to your heart, it's time to go on. To move into the full extravaganza, you essentially hold your left foot upright with your right arm as you did in the bicep curl part of it. And from there, you reach your left arm directly up to the ceiling. Now, as you pull the foot inward toward your chest, you feel as though you are unplugging your left arm bone from the socket. You stretch it upward out of the joint, and then you bend your whole torso like a half moon to the right hand side. Once you've gotten there, you use your right arm to press the foot closer to the chest. You hook your armpit around the front of the foot itself, and then as you pull the leg backward toward your chest, you lean over to the side, and you use your body's weight to fix the leg into that position. Once you've gotten to that point, you turn your left thumb down toward the floor, internally rotating your arm. You slowly slide the arm itself around the inside of the thigh as far as you possibly can. And from there, having locked the leg in place, you sweep your right arm behind the back. If possible, you can grab a wrist. If your shoulders aren't that bendy yet, you can make it a strap asana. You can grab a yoga strap or a handful of your pants, which also work conveniently. Now finally, you roll your torso open to the side, slide your shoulder blades down away from the ears. And for the next few moments, just lift your breast bone a little bit higher toward the chin to elongate the front. Now, bailing out isn't half as hard as getting in. You simply reach around, you grab a hold of the heel itself, and lift your knee off of the floor. And from there, once the leg has come out of the position, you drop it all the way back down to the ground, and you're off to the same pose on the other side. So my name is David McGowan. Thank you for checking out Don Dawson today. If you have more questions, you can hit me up at any time through YouTube, or if you prefer, you can check out the website, which is pranavaiki.com.